In this video we're going to be covering the new Intel Coffee Lake CPUs that launched on October 5th to see how they perform in a number of Adobe Creative Cloud applications. Now we're going to be looking at Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects, and Premiere Pro, but first let's go over all the different CPUs we'll be comparing in this video. Starting off we have the new Core i3-8350K, Core i5-8600K, and Core i7-8700K. Uh, we're going to be including the results for the 8600K and 8350K in the charts, but we're mostly going to be focusing on just the 8700K in this video since that's the top CPU of this line. Next is the previous generation Core i7-7700K, which will be great for letting us see how much faster the new CPUs are compared to the previous generation. We're also going to include two of the AMD Ryzen 7 CPUs. Last up is a selection of CPUs from Intel's X-Series. Most of these CPUs are a lot more expensive than the Coffee Lake CPUs, but in some Adobe applications they are the top performers regardless of budget, so these will be a good way to measure Coffee Lake against the best you can possibly buy. The rest of the system hardware is listed here, and you can also read any of our full testing articles that are linked in the description to see the exact same information. First off, we have Adobe Photoshop, where we have our testing divided into three sections. The first is general actions, which is things like opening and saving files, applying blurs and filters, and other kind of general tasks. The other two sections are creating both panorama and HDR images. For general actions, the Core i7-8700K is terrific. We're looking at about a 12% performance increase over the 7700K, or about a 20% increase over Ryzen. When creating panoramas with photo merge, the i7-8700K is again really good. The higher core count CPUs do a bit better for this task, but the 8700K is still the fastest CPU we've tested, beating even those more expensive CPUs by about 5%. The 8700K isn't quite as good for creating HDR images, but we're still looking at about 9% faster than the 7700K, or again about 20% faster than the Ryzen CPUs. All told, this makes the 8700K a clear winner for Photoshop pretty much regardless of what you do. Next up is Lightroom. Here we have our testing divided between exporting, which scales decently with more CPU cores, and pretty much everything else, which doesn't. For all these tasks that don't scale well, we're only looking at about a 5% performance gain with the 8700K over the 7700K. Still much faster than the other CPUs, but the extra two cores that Coffee Lake has doesn't really help much here. For exporting, though, the 8700K is about 25% faster than the 7700K, or about 15% faster than the Ryzen CPUs. The X-Series CPUs are even faster than that, however, especially from the 7820X on up. For Lightroom, it really depends on the amount of performance you want when exporting. If that isn't a bottleneck, then the 8700K is great, but not much faster than the 7700K. If you do a lot of exporting, then investing in something like the 7820X might be a good idea instead of the 8700K. But for most users, we would say that the 8700K is an excellent balanced option for Lightroom. Our third Adobe application is After Effects. We mention this all the time in our articles, but for those that aren't aware, After Effects changed dramatically a few years back in version 2015. At that time, Adobe added GPU acceleration, which is great, but as a consequence they removed the Render Multiple Frame Simultaneously feature. This feature is what allowed After Effects to scale almost perfectly with more cores, and its removal means that most things are actually almost single-threaded now. So the best CPU for After Effects today is much different than it was a few years ago. Uh, the exception to this is 3D rendering with the Cinema 4D engine. For this, we're looking at about a 45% increase in performance over the 7700K, which is the largest performance increase we've found so far. This still isn't quite as good as the AMD Ryzen CPUs, and quite a bit behind most of the X-Series CPUs, but for the price, it is really impressive. For more general tasks like RAM preview and exporting, we're only looking at about a 9% performance gain over the 7700K. Not terribly exciting, but not too bad either, and it does make the 8700K the top CPU here. For After Effects, whether the 8700K is good or not really depends on a number of factors, including some not shown in this chart. If your projects are relatively modest and you don't use 3D rendering, then the 8700K is excellent. But depending on how much you use the Cinema 4D rendering engine, it may be worth investing in one of the higher core count CPUs. We didn't include AMD's Threadripper in this video, but those CPUs are actually really good for those that need higher 3D rendering performance. Also, After Effects can really eat up system memory, so if you work with complex projects, you might find that the 64GB limit on Coffee Lake to be a little bit of an issue. 
Threadripper is again a good alternative since it can use up to 128 gigs of RAM, or the Intel X series CPUs can use up to 512 gigs of RAM on motherboards that support registered memory. This isn't supported by all X299 boards, but some manufacturers like Gigabyte support it on select models. Last up, we have Premiere Pro. Premiere probably has the most extensive testing suite out of any software we currently benchmark, so there's quite a bit of data here. Starting with exporting, the 8700K does really well, coming in at about 36% faster than the 7700K. This also makes it faster than Ryzen, but not quite as fast as the Core i7-7820X or higher Intel CPUs. For rendering previews, the performance gains weren't quite as much, but it's still pretty much the exact same story. Warp stabilize, uh, this result is actually the average when stabilizing between 1 and 16 clips at the same time. With a single clip, the 8700K does much better relative to the higher core count CPUs, but with 16 clips it is actually a little bit worse. This is just showing the average, so if you're concerned about warp stabilize, make sure to check our full article that's linked in the description. Uh, last is live playback, which is pretty unexciting since all the CPUs are pretty close to each other. Uh, the main thing to know here is that with 1080p and 4K footage, almost all the CPUs other than the i3 should be great. The real place where live playback changes is with 6K and 8K footage, where the Core i9-7900X and 7940X show some pretty decent performance gains. Overall for Premiere Pro, the 8700K is really good compared to the previous generation, and a great choice depending on your budget. If you're a professional video editor, or you work with 6K or 8K footage, you might want to consider upgrading to something like the 7900X or 7940X, both for the raw performance and for the higher RAM capacity. But for a more average Premiere Pro user editing home videos, or those on a tighter budget, the 8700K is a really great choice. So overall, what are we looking at for the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite? For Photoshop, the 8700K is awesome. Just use it. There's little reason to go with anything else if Photoshop is your primary work tool. Lightroom is a little less clear. Uh, compared to the other Intel consumer CPUs or AMD Ryzen, the 8700K is terrific. But if exporting is your main headache, then upgrading to an Intel X-Series CPU can give you some pretty big performance gains. For most users looking for a balanced Lightroom workstation, however, the 8700K is probably the best choice overall. After Effects is even more split. For most things, the 8700K is awesome. Definitely faster than the Ryzen or X-Series CPUs, although if you use the Cinema 4D 3D renderer, you can see some pretty decent performance gains with Ryzen, or massive gains with either AMD Threadripper or the Intel X-Series CPUs. The 64GB RAM limit might also be an issue for some more advanced users. Lastly, for Premiere Pro, the 8700K is excellent if you work with 4K or lower footage and can't justify the cost of an Intel X-Series CPU. If you are a professional video editor or you work with 6K or higher footage, however, we would definitely recommend trying to get up to a CPU like the Core i9-7900X or even better, the Core i9-7940X if possible. So that does it for our quick look at the new Coffee Lake CPUs for the Adobe Creative Suite. This is our first time going over a new CPU line in this format, so definitely let us know what you thought in the comments. And if you want more detail on our testing, make sure you check out our full articles that are linked in the description.